Praise the Lord. I welcome you all for this Monday Thursday worship service. Let us begin our worship service this evening. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let us pray. Our Lord, our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for giving all of us another opportunity to celebrate this Monday Thursday in this manner. Wherever your people are seated, we pray, O oh Lord, they may feel the presence of God. As we sing praises unto you, bring our prayers and supplications, and continue to listen to the word of God and participate in the Holy Communion. May your presence be felt, and may we all be renewed with your spirit. Take control of the, control of the entire service. Lead us and guide us in Jesus' most Precious name we pray. Amen. Let us all rise up and sing for the glory of God. Hymn number one. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
remain standing. Let us all read responsively Psalm number 41. The Book of Psalms Psalm 41 To the Chief Musician, a Psalm of David Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me, and raise me up, that I may requite them. By this I know that thou favorest me, because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. And as for me, thou upholdest me in mine integrity, and settest me before thy face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen and amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Amen. Remain standing. Let us all say the Apostle Creed and affirm our faith. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Let us intercede for the nation, for the people, those who are affected with COVID-19 and for various other needs. Heavenly Father, we come to the throne of grace we humbly bow, bow down before you, worship you, and adore you. We thank you, Lord, for enabling us to come once again in this manner to sit together and worship the Lord. Though we are unable to come to the sanctuary and pray, but your word of God gives us an opportunity. Where there are two, three gathered in my name, I will be there. We thank you, Lord, for hearing us. We thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. We continue to pray for the people, those who are badly affected, people, those who have passed away, and the dear ones, those who are 
going through a time of grief and sorrow. We do not know how long this is going to extend, but we believe and trust that you are going to bring to an end. The whole global churches are praying. People around the country are praying. Both children and elder people are praying. So many prayer cells are meeting here and there and praying, Lord Jesus. Our only plea is forgive us. Forgive our sins and grant us your mercy. Let the nation come back to its status. There are so many people wandering in the street for a timely meal. There are so many families who are locked down expecting will there be someone come and feed us. When we go through the situation that are prevailing in the villages and in the slum areas, it's pathetic. We do not know how their needs are going to be met, how their needs are going to be addressed. But we pray and trust as we eat in our homes. Help us, Lord, to think of those people and extend our hands to help them, Lord Jesus. This is the time for the Christian community to move out and extend help to make these people to feel that they are not left out. Although so many churches and NGOs and the government organizations are going out to help these people, but still we pray, Lord, as the situation is going day by day tough, we want to see that they are, their needs are being met. We pray for the national leaders as they take different um, steps to bring down the situation under control. Let the people cooperate. Let the people stay in their homes to prevent themselves. We are saddened to hear that so many doctors and nurses are affected and we do not know how this is going to be. But we pray, Lord Jesus, that you are in control of the situation and you will bring everything to normalcy. We pray for the churches, all the churches would continue to Stay in tune with you. Let the church be reformed. Let the church come back to its original status. We are not gathering as a society. We are not gathering as a group of people coming for some kind of discussion and debate. We are coming to the church only to renew ourselves in the presence of God and to pray for the world. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Week, every day we could hear your servant speaking to us. And today as we are waiting for your word to come to us, speak to me and speak through me. And also as we partake in the Holy Communion, the historical Lord's Supper that was, that was instituted by you with your disciples before you embraced the cross. Help us, Lord, to remember the vicarious death upon the cross of Calvary enable us to think uh, how the Lord Jesus would have really gone through the situation. We are not going to participate as participating people, but we are going to participate as your own body. And Lord Jesus, we pray that thou take control of the entire service, lead us and guide us. We pray for our own congregation members, the families, children. Bless them. We pray for the senior citizens. We pray for the sick people. We pray for all the people, others, uh, other people, those who are seated around the table this evening to listen to the word of God. That they would also be strengthened, encouraged, empowered, and we'll be refreshed. When we go out of this service, we will certainly be renewed. We thank you and praise you. We give you all glory and honor. We pray this prayer, the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we have come to receive the word of God, let us turn to the scripture. Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 26. Let us um, read from verse 26 to 30. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink of this fruit of the wine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. May the Lord add his blessings through the reading of the word of God. We are all aware that this event has taken place prior to the Garden, Garden of Gethsemane event. The Lord Jesus Christ very well understood that his time has come near. And he wanted to sit with his disciples, wanted to teach a few lessons about humility, about love. And so he took an opportunity of observing the Passover festival together. Jesus took all his disciples and he had made arrangements and he asked Peter and John to go and arrange the Passover meal in one of the houses. And they were obliged, they arranged it. And there, the Lord Jesus Christ was doing this. And that has become a very historical and a significant one. And it has become a mandatory that we should observe it. And that's why we call it as Maundy Thursday. Maundy Thursday, the word has come from Mando's mandate. It is expected that this should be observed by all those who follow the Lord Jesus Christ till his coming. And that is why the church is making it a very important point that we should invite people to partake in the Lord's Supper so that they can remember, they can continue to participate in this Holy Communion. Some of the churches, they observe Holy Communion every Sunday. Some of the churches, some Anglican churches I know, that they have Holy Communion every day. The people, they come to the church Early in the morning, participate in the Holy Communion. They go refreshed and they go renewed. Some of the traditions we have once in a month. They conveniently keep it for first of every month, second of every month. However, annually once, we are able to have this Monday Thursday service and that has been well observed universally by all the churches. And we are here today to understand some of the things about the Lord's Supper. There are three things I want you to understand along with me. We need to understand 
the background of this one. So I have given a title, a backward look. Backward look, retrospective. We need to go back to the life of Israel. The children of Israel, when they were living in Egypt, they were slaves, treated like slaves. They have gone through a very tough time for 430 long years. They were crying unto God, God, will you save us? And God, in his perfect time, had sent Moses. Of course, Moses was born in Egypt. He was well trained in all aspects in the palace. We know the story that he had to flee and he was living in wilderness for 40 long years. Then the Lord gave him a burning bush vision where he got the call. The call was nothing but the people's cry. Every day people were crying unto the Lord, Lord, will you save us? Exodus chapter 2, 23 to 25, we read, people groaned because of the bondage. They cried out and their cry came up to God because of bondage. And God sent Moses. And Moses was a little reluctant to take the leadership because he was not eloquent in speech. And God had to give him his own brother, Aaron. And both of them took stand to obey God's call and to meet Pharaoh to fight for the people's release. In this particular verse, I understand one thing. The verse very clearly says, God heard their groaning. A God can hear. And then we see God looked upon the children of Israel. Our God can see. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So God has got heart and mind to remember the covenant that he made with his forefathers. And so now the word very clearly says God acknowledges them. And so God has not forgotten his children. But we have very often forgotten him. And God puts us in a situation where we really endure hardship and we realize that there is Savior, there is God. And when they cried, God heard it. And today we are also put up in a situation, people are crying. And the other day I was uh, listening to one audio clip where a small child was praying along with their parents and she was crying and praying. And she says in her prayer, Lord, my mother is crying, my father is crying. We are reading the word of God and crying and we believe that you are going to release us. And the COVID-19 is going to be vanished from this nation. And when she was praying that one, it really touched my heart. And I certainly believe God is hearing such prayers. And you and I are called to pray these days so that the Lord would send redemption. So when Moses came and appeared before Pharaoh, it was a grand surprise for Pharaoh to see Moses coming and appearing. And uh, he had to say, I have come here to plead only one thing. God says, let my people go and serve me. And that is only one thing. And Pharaoh was perplexed. Who is he to plead for these people? Why I should send these people? Why they should go and serve their Lord? And so he was a little bit upset and he was really not cooperating. Exodus chapter 4, 23 and 24, God himself is talking to Moses saying, Israel, my son, my firstborn, let him go to serve me. And God himself is saying, if you request to let him go, and then also he says, if he doesn't let you take my people to go out, I will kill your firstborn. 
So very categorically, the Lord has you know, spoken to Moses saying that you have to plea, you have to ask him if he's not going to do anything, I'm going to take the lives of the firstborn. When the story goes on, Moses was pleading and um, he was hardening his heart. And we know the story that there were nine plagues sent one by one and he wasn't willing to send these people. Finally, we read in Exodus chapter 12, 29 and 30, where the Lord was saying that this is the last plague and through this, King Pharaoh would come to understand and he will let you go. That was very severe and the Lord instructed these people how you are going to behave at this time. I am going to take the firstborn of all the children. You are Egyptians, but I want to save your children. I want to save my people. And he had given a very clear cut instruction in the book of Exodus chapter 12. Everything is very clearly you know, taught and mentioned. And uh, it was instructed to the people of Israel that you take a sheep or goat without blemish, cut it, take the blood and paste it on the doorstep. Then on the very night itself, you have to eat the meat and you have to eat with the unleavened bread and the mutton has to be roasted and eaten and you have to eat with bitter herbs and salt water. And this was the instruction given and the people obeyed and they did it. The very night we know the angel was passing over and when they were passing, when the angel was passing over, we read that wherever uh, the angel found the doorstep with the blood spot, the particular family was saved and protected. Next day morning they could hear everywhere yelling and crying and the people of Israel come to know something had happened and uh, Pharaoh also came to know that it is unbearable and he had to call Moses and said that you take these people and you, and you go. So God had to severely punish and God had to release his people in this manner. Then Moses had instructed, this ought to be remembered every year. This ought to be taught to our children. Tomorrow your children will ask, what is the meaning of this Passover? Then you have to sit around the table and you have to explain to them. Then they will understand the real meaning of Passover. And you were saved by the blood that was shed. And that has been still observed by the Jews, Jewish community and they observe this festival. But for us today, we are not celebrating Passover of the Jewish culture, but we are observing something different, what the Lord Jesus has taught. Jesus has been sent into this world as the lamb. That's what you know. we read when John the Baptist was calling, behold, the lamb is coming. And so Jesus came into this world as a lamb without blemish. And he had to give himself as a ransom for mankind. And by his and through his blood, we are saved. I will read a few verses uh, to make us understand a little bit. In John chapter 6, 32, I am telling you the truth. Jesus said, what Moses gave you was not the bread from heaven. It is my father who gives you the real bread from heaven. John chapter 6, 51 says, I am the living bread that God came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I will give him is my flesh, which I give so that the world may live. Luke chapter 22, 78. During the Passover festival, Jesus sent Peter and John to arrange it. And it was on the 14th day of the month. And Jesus taught these disciples that this is going to be a very memorial Lord's Supper because today I want you to understand that my body is going to be broken. 
and my blood is going to be shed and i will not be with you but remember but remember and observe it till i come again so this was made very clearly and this was instructed to the disciples very clearly to do, follow it that is why we are doing it today the second thing that we want you to understand is inward look introspective when you and i want to participate in this holy communion though it has got the historical importance and value though it is enabling us to understand the vicarious death upon the cross of calvary and we understand the lord jesus has said that through me you will have eternal life but how to participate and uh, how we can take this holy communion and that's very important i want you to read along with me first corinthians chapter 11 it says verse 27 therefore whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the lord it says that whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the lord in an unworthy manner that means we need to have certain discipline we need to follow certain rules and regulations to participate in the holy communion worthy you and i are not worthy to come to the presence of god you and i are not so clean but the lord jesus says that if you confess your sin and ask forgiveness i will cleanse you and i will give you space to come to my presence you know very often we see people i have to take a holy communion that's all in their mind but they do not know the preparation that they have to make you know when you want to attend a wedding what are the preparation you do you know you set your dress and you do all the makeup and you see that you are appearing in the wedding a presentable person you don't go with your you know night dress you don't go you know without taking bath you know you have certain you know uh, things that you follow and when you come to the presence of god you need to set your mind i am going to partake in the holy communion and i am going to meditate upon the cross of calvary and i need to go with the reverence so he says but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup so examine that is where we give opportunity for the people to examine themselves before they partake in the holy communion so introspective is very very important psalm 139 search me o lord if there is anything let me know and so we need to ask the lord to show things that are not pleasing to god if there is anything that is hindering you to participate in his holy communion you can ask the lord to ask you psalm 51 is a very good psalm to introspect how when david committed sin against the lord he was asking the lord lord blot me out you show me lord jesus show me lord and he says i have lost the joy of salvation then he pleads create in me a clean heart o lord restore unto me the joy of salvation cast me not away from the presence o lord and so he was you know pleading and he was asking the lord to you know make him all right so that he would be coming back to his normal life the parable of, parable of um, invitation to the wedding we read and we see that in the gate only there are people who would you know watch who are all come with the prepared garment and they have certain attire that they have to wear and come if you are not having that attire they will not take you so the lord also has got certain conditions and we need to you know follow and so when you come to this holy communion don't come as you are but ask the lord to forgive you ask the lord to 
you know, make you all right and come. Otherwise, you will be participating in an unworthy manner and you, will, you and I will be receiving God's curse upon you, upon your family. God forbid, you, you and I should not earn curse in participating in the Holy Communion. So consider this as a very sacred institution instituted by God. The last thing that you and I want, to, to, uh, I want you to understand along with me is a forward look. Okay, we had a backward look, we had inward look, and now we are going to have a forward look, the prospective look, okay? In 1 Corinthians chapter 26, it says, 11.26, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. That means we have to observe or participate this Holy Communion till the second coming. And it's also it's indicating that it is a proclamation. We are telling the whole world that these people are doing this one. Not they want to participate and they want to have some self-satisfaction. But this indicates the Lord Jesus who came into this world, died, rose again, is going to come again. So it's a testimony. It's a big proclamation. And that is why we do not want, to, want you to miss it. When we wanted to organize this online Holy Communion, there were so many comments. Some pastors said it is not right. Some pastors said, uh, how can we do this one? All these comments had come. Yes, we know the church is a consecrated place and the altar and the pastors who are dedicated to consecrate. And when you receive this from the pastor, you have a feeling that you are receiving from God's anointed person. But at home, you may not feel that much comfort. But we do not want you to miss communicating to the world that you are doing this even at home and the others are going to ask you, why are you so particular about observing this Holy Communion? Then you can say, my Lord Jesus is going to come today or tomorrow. And by participating in this one, I am communicating to the world. I am declaring to the world and I am proclaiming to the world saying that my Jesus is going to come again. Yes, for this purpose only, we are called to do this. Every church should observe this Holy Communion that the Lord liberates, the Lord redeems as he redeemed the people of Israel from the bondage of slavery. You and I are redeemed from the bondage of sin by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is very important that we observe. Dear people of God, as we are seated, you continue to examine yourself and ask the Lord to enable you to participate in this Holy Communion. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word that has come to us to remind us why are we observing this Holy Communion and how we ought to participate in this Holy Communion. And while participating in this Holy Communion, what are we proclaiming to this world? Enable us, Lord, to continue to observe this one with great reverence so that we will be acceptable in your sight. We thank you and praise you. We give you all glory and honor. Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Let us um, sing this hymn that is found in hymn book um, 198, Just As I Am. Just yeah. yeah. Just
Let us all be ready to participate in the Holy Communion. Let us prepare our hearts, minds and thoughts to join in the Holy Communion order. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament of your comfort and devoutly kneeling, make your humble confession to Almighty God. Let us all say this prayer together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto thee. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what the scripture says to those of a humble and contrite heart. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Jesus came into the world to save sinners. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Lift up your hearts, we lift up, up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord, where is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounded duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. At this time, may I invite you to spend a few minutes in silence, examining yourself before participating in the Holy Communion. If you are prompted by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, to confess any sins, this is the time that you can confess to the Lord and get the clearance from the Lord to participate in this Holy Communion. Let us all say together. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, and saying, Holy, 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 Lord of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, 
who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only son Jesus Christ to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made there by the one offering of himself a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue this memorial of his precious death hear us O merciful father we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we receiving this bread and wine according to thy son our savior jesus christ's holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may also be partakers of the divine nature through him who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me likewise after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink ye all of this for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins do this as soft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me amen let us all say this prayer of confession we do not presume to come to this thy table O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord whose mercy is unfailing. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to partake of these memorials of thy Son, Jesus Christ, that we may be filled with the fullness of his life, may grow into his likeness, and may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. This is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, broken for us. Take. This is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ for us on the cross of Calvary. Take. Drink by faith. The Lord's table is ready. All those who come to participate, you are welcome to participate. Few instructions as I will be as you are around the table. I want the head of the family to break the bread and give it to each one of the members who are seated and I will say at that time you can take it then afterwards you can distribute the wine or juice whatever is kept and when I say the prayer you can partake it and afterwards I will be pronouncing the benediction Now you can serve the bread. This is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you on the cross of Calvary. Take, eat by faith. serve the one. This is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for you on the cross of Calvary. Take, drink ye by faith. As you have taken part in the Holy Communion, may the triune God continue to give you the needed grace and strength to live for his glory, above all to be a real witnesses for him, wherever you live. In the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, we send you to this world with this divine peace and love. Amen.
let us all say together the following in prayers and thank the Lord for enabling us to participate in the Holy Communion. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice, our praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his holy blood, we and thy whole church may obtain forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves and our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounded duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father, Almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us all say together the following Gloria. Glory be to God on high and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks unto thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that take us away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that take us away the sins of the whole world, have mercy upon us. Thou that take us away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sitteth at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us close with the word of prayer. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you once again for enabling us to observe this Monday Thursday service in a meaningful way. We pray for all the members, those who participated in their respective homes. We pray for the offering that is placed by your people that would bless it and use it for the extension of your kingdom. We thank you and praise you. We give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit may rest and abide with us all, both now and for evermore. Amen. Couple of announcements. Once again, I want to thank all of you for staying together for this Monday Thursday service. Tomorrow we will be meeting at 10 a.m. to observe the Good Friday service. Reverend Ashish Hriday will be sharing the word of God. And on Sunday, again we will be meeting at 10 a.m. All the three congregations will be together. I also want to thank uh, the Robinson Memorial Methodist Church for allowing us to have this service conducted from their altar and the church. And I also want to thank uh, Gladstone, Joyce and Nixon and Michael for helping us in recording, editing and publishing it. I also want to thank Reverend Michael Ward, the pastor of the Robinson Memorial Methodist Church. Thank you.